Hi guys, Professor Tomney here with another Chem Complete video and we're continuing our alcohol lecture today and we are now up to reactions of alcohols. So we've discussed how to create alcohols, we've discussed how to protect alcohols and you should go back and watch those videos if you have any issues with that. And so now we are going to check out the actual reactions that alcohols will undergo. So reactions of alcohols is what we're going to start with. Now, when we do reactions of alcohols, missing an O there, when we do reactions of alcohols, we are going to break this down into three sections. The first section for this video, which will be somewhat short, is the original set of reactions. You should have come across an organic one, and you can go back and search for videos on these if you have any issues with them, but it's going to be a recap. The next thing we'll cover is dehydrations. And then finally, we will cover oxidations, which are the complementary process to the reductions that we already took a look at. So let's go ahead and do a basic review of the three alcohol reactions you should have come across in organic one at some point. So the first one is that you can have tertiary alcohols and you can react these groups with some sort of strong acid where I have HX and what this is going to do is provide the corresponding RX the alkyl halide so what do we mean when we talk about this well let's take a look if I have for instance a t-butyl alcohol which would be a tertiary alcohol and I subject that to HBr well, the first thing that's going to occur is that the oxygen will act as a base with its lone pairs to grab the acidic hydrogen and the bromine will leave. So what we have done in this first step is created a good leaving group for the alcohol by turning it into water. Because water, when it's protonated like that, will very readily leave. And again, we saw a few reactions like this back in Organic 1. Uh, this particular one included was covered in the alkyl halide set of chapters when we started talking about substitution reactions. So what's going to happen here? Well, because this is tertiary, we're going to favor an SN1 type of reaction. And the water will leave. And it's going to leave behind a tertiary carbocation. And that is perfectly acceptable because tertiaries have nice hyperconjugation and inductive effects to stabilize the plus charge that's left behind on that carbon. And at that point, we can then get the bromine, which is hanging out in solution, makes an excellent nucleophile. Now keep in mind, bromine is a pretty weak base because when we take a look at its conjugate acid, HBr is very strong. However, bromine is a very good nucleophile it will come in and attack the carbocation and what we end up with is CH3 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 so we keep our tert butyl but now we have the halide right instead of the alcohol so I can take any ROH provided it's tertiary I can add HX and the mechanism that I will undergo will be SN1 and I end up with RX okay so that's the first one that you should be aware of that's a reaction of an alcohol the next one is somewhat similar in terms of alkyl halide in fact all these sort of revolve around alkyl halides in some way shape or form with substitution reactions and that is if my ROH is primary or secondary so now I cannot do SN1 type reactions where I take the protonation and leave a carbocation behind I have one of two options I can choose to do SOCl2 and you usually need a base with this so you're gonna have pyridine or something along those lines um, pyridine by the way is an aromatic compound that has a nitrogen so we will talk about that when we get to our aromatic chapter but that would be pyridine uh, the 
lone pairs on the nitrogen are involved in helping to exchange the hydrogen. We're not going to get into all that right now. But what you need to know is SOCl2 can provide RCl if this is primary or secondary. Or if I would prefer bromine, I can use PBr3, phosphorus tribromide, and you can use ether as your solvent. And then you will get the corresponding bromide. These follow SN2 type of mechanisms. I'm not going to go into all of the mechanistic detail in this particular video because I would like to keep this somewhat short as a um, sort of a reevaluation of reactions that we've done. But this is number two. So alcohols that are primary or secondary um, use SOCl2 and PBr3 to get the corresponding alkyl halides. Uh, a lot of students will ask, why would I want to turn an alcohol into an alkyl halide? Well, these are good leaving groups. And so then I can pick out any nucleophile that I would like, and I can start substituting that in and creating all sorts of different functional groups on my alkyl chain. So very important reactions. The third one uh, has to deal with leaving groups itself. And so the third one is when I have an alcohol, and I would like to turn that alcohol into a leaving group that's not a halide, if you guys remember, we have tosylate. Now, the general structure of a tosylate leaving group is O. Here's the R portion, okay? You have S, double bond O, double bond O. This is attached to a aromatic ring. And then there's a toluene. Well, this whole structure is toluene, but there's a methyl group that's down here. So this whole thing is a tosylate. If this group were to leave, the minus charge left on this oxygen would be resonance stabilized on the oxygens and around the ring. So lots of resonance stability that is found in this entire structure. Well, in order to get a tosylate onto an R group in the first place, that R group should have an alcohol. And the alcohol is exposed to a tosyl chloride instead of uh, it being tosylate right off the bat. So what's going to end up happening is this R right here is really the ROH in the alcohol. And this oxygen right here comes from the alcohol. So again, to help remove this proton, we're going to include pyridine or some other type of base. And when we go through this process, the uh, CL here is really taking the place of this RO group. So the TSCL reagent would be very similar to the tosylate that I just drew over there. So you would have your ring, you would have your S double bond O, and then you would have your chloride. And so the idea is that the alcohol can come in and can attack right and the chlorine can leave and so what I do is I turn the alcohol into a tosylate group sometimes you'll see this is like O tos or something like that but what I've done is I've created a very good leaving group and that again is subject to all sorts of uh, substitution reactions that can now occur at that site because the leaving group is so great so that is a summary. This is number three. That's a summary of the three reactions that you should have been exposed to at some point along the way or at least be somewhat familiar with in terms of alcohols that were covered back in the alkyl halide chapters. So that's going to wrap up this video. The next video we will take a look at dehydrations and then finally move to oxidations. Remember to like the video if it was helpful. You feel free to comment, and I will be happy to get back to you with any questions you might have. And as always, if you hit that subscribe button, you will be up to date anytime I release a new organic chemistry video. So I thank you guys for joining me, and I will see you for the next lecture.